Coming to you live from Creedmoor, North Carolina. Not sure if you watched the little what we're doing over the weekend. And Sean and I have been busy putting together this coop for a roll off today, which uh, they're going to head out here in a little bit and do the roll off. But I wanted to show you guys, we got talking about it a little bit, is the difference between staining and painting and how to make it look pretty, if you will. And there's a lot of pros and cons, just like to everything else in life. There are pros and cons to staining and pros and cons to painting. And we talked a little bit about that, and maybe we'll talk about it again. But what Sean is doing right now to make it look real pretty, to make it look real good, this is what is absolutely required. So we all know wood is organic, I hope we do, and that it always isn't going to be perfect. And I do get calls, people going, why is my coop not as pretty as I see in your pictures? And that is because when we do the finishing, it, there's a whole day in just finishing. And I kid you not. So here's a textbook example. Now, this coop has been stained. And what that means is it's a lot easier to finish and sand versus paint will kind of adhere to the surface. But if you go to paint it, um, and then sand it, it'll, it'll gum up. It just doesn't finish as nice. This is one of the reasons why we love the solid acrylic stain. The disadvantage of solid acrylic stain is it really soaks in. I mean, that's what stain does, and it really amplifies the defects that you can see in the wood. So here's a great example. You know, you got all these knots right here, and they don't look good. Now, some people might be okay with it, and you're finishing your own coop, and you may not care, but if you really want it to look pretty, we love a wood filler. I'm gonna show you what wood filler we use. And the reason why we use wood filler is it actually has pieces of wood in it. It's like sawdust, but it'll dry really, really hard. And if you apply it correctly, it's just like if you ever drywalled, um, if you ever mudded drywall, it's the same thing. So you apply it with a knife and you wipe it off and you hit it with a sander real quick. It should level off that surface and then you go right back over and stain it or paint it in this case. Now, um, we will be, I'm not sure if we're gonna be doing on this one, but if you got where there's two pieces, two different pieces of wood joining, that's where you're gonna wanna caulk because you're gonna get more expansion and contraction right there. You're gonna get more movement. So that's where it's best to use caulk, not wood filler. Uh, the wood's not gonna expand and contract as much in its own area, its own piece. So you gotta go through, you gotta wood fill. So we're gonna show, we're gonna see, we're gonna watch uh, Sean do that here real quick. Cause I tell you, it looks like a lot of work. It kinda is, but uh, yeah. well, here, go grab some wood filler. Show us some wood. <laughs> Show us paint the fence, Daniel son. Come on, Swanson son. <laughs> um, okay, so here's what you don't want to do. I'm not sure what happened there. So when you, you don't want to have to make more work for yourself. Um, all right, so what are we working with here? So this is by far uh, is not our favorite wood filler. Yes. All right, so, wood. all right, so we're not getting paid for this. We should. But this stuff's just great, and it does dry fast. It resists shrinking and cracking, interior and exterior. Very, very important, and it's paintable and stainable. Anyways. Um, stainable, paintable, stainable. Yes, you said a lot better than me. So, I mean, and you got to let it dry, obviously, and you're going around. Yep. So let's pick a spot. So that's going to get hidden by the... Well, you got some spots on the front here. Yeah, well, you still see the gable. Now, how come you didn't wipe these ones? That's usually when somebody's talking to me. Oh, is that it? I don't know why, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone's, someone's talking. All right, well, we got these up here on the cable. Yep. All right, so let's see, let's see some action shots. Oh, boy. Now, the other trick, too, is if it gets real clumpy and falls off, what do we do? Add a little water. Add a little water. Yep. Sean has, I've, has, I've seen him actually add coffee a couple times. Hey, we, had no... we didn't have any water. <laughs> Well, it's 90% coffee uh, water. So you want it almost like toothpaste. Like right now, it looks a little thick, so it might look a little... That's not bad. All right, let's see it. So... You push it on. Yeah. Like almost like drywall mud. Yeah, same thing. You push it on. Yeah, see, that's real clumpy. And just pulling it through the... I'll come through, clean these seams up. Well, see, I think you're working harder. Well, you should be. But well, having a putty knife works. Yes. Usually so that's little... how you scrape it? Yeah. See, I do it a little it all, differently. It all goes on. I'm going with the grain here. But oh, yeah. You the... definitely want to slide with the grain. You're doing it a lot differently. 
but okay, so that's that's what I wanted to see, where you cut it. So you apply it and you cut it. So you're gonna use the flex of the knife, push it against it, push it down into those holes, and then you cut it with the straight edge, and that makes it nice and flat. Um, and then we'll come back through and sand it, and then stain it again. So we're. What time you guys plan on leaving today, AV? Uh, we want to be there between two and three. Why so did you give him the Japanese back? Because I would have just went back in there and got it because I know he took it. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely right. getting it back. So here's here's an example. You guys can see this. So this has been stained, and now they're going through and sanding it. And it just after you wood fill it and you sand it, it just makes it look so nice. Gives it that nice falling. Um. So I hope that helps, makes sense. When to use stain, when to use paint, when to use wood filler, when to use caulk. And then it is a good idea to come in and caulk all this. Again, we got two pieces of wood, so they're gonna move, especially this is ply, so that's gonna move less than this wood. But you come in here with a bead of caulk and it'll look really, really nice. I do have to say, I love these colors. I love the Galvalume with that moth green. I think I'm called it mint tingling. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. Definitely thank you for saying hello where you're watching from. All right, no questions. All right, so that is the coop, and they're gonna go do the roll off today. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you the room? Oh boy, here we go, family owned business, homeschooling, someone's birthday today. How often do you need to call for maintenance, TIA? Thank you in advance, I think that means. Call for maintenance, what do you mean? Maintenance on what? Maintenance on the coop? Maintenance here at the building? <laughs> There's maintenance right there, just sitting and supervising. Say hi, Dad. <laughs> Dad. What do I hear ringing? Oh, I'll be in in a second, thank you. <laughs> um, love homeschooling. And today's his birthday, so I think he got out of school today. Um, use a good caulk. So I'll be honest with you, I love that question because this is why I actually don't like caulking. I hate it because you actually increase maintenance. You don't have to caulk that, but if you're really looking for that perfect mono look where everything looks like one unit, the caulk does the trick. And if you use a good caulk with a silicone, oh my gosh. Um, but if it's a good caulk and you got real true silicone in it, you shouldn't have as much maintenance as you can some of these cheaper caulks. And I tell you, we've had really good luck. The caulk we use, again, we don't get paid by them. Yeah, right there. It's just regular. What are you using today? This dab, all-purpose acrylic latex. Right. So that, and it's a 40-year. So technically, you shouldn't have to deal with it for 40 years, which I doubt that's going to be the case. We have noticed, um, if you ever try to use clear, it shrinks way more. We don't like using clear. We like the colored caulk. And there is a little bit of a trick. Maybe not in this case, if you're using the tube to make your bead, but you can mix a little bit of paint in with the caulk if you're using it more as like a it spackle. It's in the paint out though. I have noticed that. That's why I don't do it as much anymore. Right. <clears throat> 40 years, I, I wouldn't say that. And um, I would suggest if you are applying a darker stain or paint on your coop and you are gonna caulk, go with the darker caulk. Um, yep. Just because the white, you're going to apply a lot more coats of stain to cover that up. Yeah. Versus paint, maybe not as much. Again, those are the advantages and disadvantages, the paint or stain. And that's it. That's all there is for a bead of caulk. And then obviously you just run your finger. You're supposed to get your finger wet. That's what the pros say. I don't know. One of my first employees, is what he did. He kept looking at his finger. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? All right, um, I think that's it. Got a lot going on on the inside. Got some new people starting today. So if you have any other questions, let me know, especially about finishing. I just wanted to thank you all for your info because of Carolina Coops, I'm getting to raise my own chickens for the first time. And that's awesome. Uh, you will love it. I tell you, hat, raising chickens is the easiest hobby in the world as long as you have the right coop. And all I ever try to teach people is if you're going to build your own, which I think is awesome, and if you're not going to build your own, you better buy from me, um, you're going to end up probably spending more money, believe it or not, building your own. But having that experience and that fun and whatever reasons you may have to get, out, <clears throat> get outside is priceless. But size matters. Number one, don't cheap out on materials. 
that is so important for the quality of the coop. And then the function, the world of designing chicken coops, you wouldn't believe how much goes into it. One change, there's a major domino effect. There's a good question. Hold on, let's, I wish these comments would stay up. What should you expect with roll-off services? Um, I'm assuming you mean what should a customer expect having a roll-off service from us? If so, well, you should expect for us to show up with your chicken coop fully assembled. That's the roll-off. We have all kinds of different trailers. So I got a little one there. Just for the record, we're under construction. That's why it looks like a mess around here. And the garbage, the garbage truck never showed up last week. We got a couple trailers. We got an eight-foot deck over aluminum, a little utility, and, well, cargo trailer. We have two of those that we drive all over with the panelized walls, which is not roll-off service. And then one of my favorite trailers, our gooseneck over there for the... Not sure if you guys can see it. Anyways, yeah, it's right there. We use that for the skidsters and whatnot. We show up fully assembled and usually a two or four man crew. And we ask, where do you want it? And there's usually a lot of talk about that because placement, where you're putting it is very important. And you, we're gonna check to make sure it's dead nuts level. If it is not level and flat, the coop is not gonna sit right. So that's a big problem. A lot of times we do get paid to do the site prep. Um, we have specialized dollies that we use to wheel it around and then we'll drop it in place. And then after that, 99% of the time, we'll put on the apron, put in the heated water system, answer any and all questions you have about the coop. We do a full walk around, uh, especially even chickens. You know, if you got your questions about chickens, we bring hemp, uh, which will save you on shipping if we have it in stock, which has been, of course, I'm sure you guys have heard about the supply chain issues. We got a little bit of stock left. Um, that's it. I mean, but as far as uh, other things to expect, expect to uh, hopefully have a lot of fun. Enjoy not having to do anything. Watch people work. Um, things like that. So I hope that answered your question. What to expect with a roll-off. Is there anything else? What else? Did I forget anything? What to expect with a roll-off? Because you guys are the roll-off kings. Um, oh, Ro expect a lot of bitching and moaning because these things are heavy. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, we're getting old. Yeah. That's why I got to hire the younger crew. Um, biggest thing is overhead obstructions. Oh yeah, make make sure we got a way to it. That's been an issue. Absolutely. I'll never forget one of the first roll-offs we did. We had to bring in a crane. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find those pictures. Yep. Uh, leech lines, overhead obstructions, you know, gates. Yeah. So these are things that we would ask just to make sure. And this is all about before we sell and when and the customer agrees to roll off. Hey. And, the most crucial part, a level surface for it to go on. Yeah. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take the transit to laser level and check it. And yeah, you never know what to expect there. <laughs> they say it's almost, it's kind of level. Yeah. Which do you prefer, roll off or building on site? So now, to, before I answer that question, because I also love that question because that's a hot topic. Some of us like roll offs, some of us hate roll offs. Um, and building on site so we panelize bring it to you do we have any coops in here this probably looks like a mess in here no there's nothing in there there's nothing in here no. yeah so we actually load up the cargo trailers with the panelized coops and then assemble them on site because a lot of times that all started because you can't fit six foot wide coops or eight foot wide coops through gates so anyways i me personally i love the roll-offs because it's done here we're able to assemble the coop whether it's you know we're outside just because it's beautiful here in the carolinas right now uh but when you can build in an environmentally controlled area to almost completion or completion i i just prefer that it is heavier to move it around it takes a lot more muscle and, and, and maneuvering with the trailers but for me i just prefer it i love going down the road so many people you know they'll follow us to gas stations or whatnot they're like oh my god what is that is that really a chicken coop um but yeah, I don't know. AV, what do you prefer more, assembly on site or roll off? Assembly. I like to assemble on site. Just to meet the customer. I think Sean's been uh, whispering in your ear, little no, sweet. No, no, no. I'd, I'd rather. I mean, this is this is nice to have a nice flat surface and roll it on a trailer, just roll it off. But I like to I like the customers too. So. Yeah, I tell you, it's not fun when we show up on site and the customer says, "Yeah, you can do a roll off, tons of room." 
Yeah, we just we just were at a place where he said we could, and then he forgot he had steps going to it. <laughs> What's the largest coop you can do of a roll off <coughs> without wide load permits? Eight foot six. That is how loud. That's that's how wide you are allowed to go down the highway without a wide load permit. We could do a ten foot. We have pushed it. No, it's not a far drive. Done. We've done ten foot wide. Well, not ideal. It's not fun. Um, but eight foot six. So we have done eight foot, and that's actually why I have the aluminum trailer. That's eight foot six deck over, and that's for the wider ones. Plus, it's aluminum, so it's really light. We did just do a duck house roll off, which hopefully you guys will see on TV on a sh network with a couple letters in it. Not allowed to talk about it, but that was fun. And they had a tilt trailer, which I really got to get a tilt trailer. We did not need to pay someone to do a roll off for us. They called us, found out even more parts of reality just are not real at all. Yep. But it was one of my favorite shows, so I couldn't resist. Why, uh, why don't you do wood filler before doing the staining? Another great question. Well, uh, okay. Well, the boss told me about this after I stained it. I normally would do that, yes, before staining. Okay, so that is true. If you're going to do this level of finishing, yes. Whether you're going to stain or paint it, do that first. Um, I'm not sure if the customer paid for that level of finishing. We do try to tier it to try to fit everyone's budget, but... I don't know. We're behind on this coop. I have a big heart. I would be bankrupt if it wasn't for non to make sure I don't give away everything for free. It's just a, a super nice touch. Uh, so they already went ahead and sprayed it. And when I realized it was a stain, I knew we can get away with the wood filler. So you put it in and then everything we talked about before, apply it, sand it, restain it, retouch it up. It'll look really good. If it was painted, no, nah. whole different story. Especially those thicker paints like what we used out in New Mexico. That sucked finishing, especially darker the color, the more difficult it is. <coughs> so what are you doing? Are you cleaning? No, I'm getting paint in my tray so I can paint these windows. Have, Wait, where are you? I've already been screened, so I can't spray them again. Love this little sprayer. That's one of our portable sprayers, that little tight. Not a cheap sprayer, but God, that thing will push some thick paint. And push it far. Some Great long coverage. hose. Huh? Great coverage. Great coverage. Um, do you usually do two coats of stain or is one usually enough? Uh, you're going to do a minimum of two, whether it's stain or paint. Uh, especially with softer woods. Now, this is dug fir. It is considered a soft wood, but it's, it's, very, it's on the harder side of things when it comes to soft woods. And we're also using a solid, so you have a lot more forgiveness. If you if you were using a transparent to semi-transparent, and you're you're staining, especially like the worst is pine, you get blotchiness. And a lot of times, if you're going to want to see the grain, you need to use a conditioner that'll level off the stain. But because it's solid, you treat it really a lot like paint. But I know for a fact, minimum two coats. You get that first one on, it's really going to soak in. And that kind of levels the playing field. So when you put your second coat on, it just makes it look that much nicer because it's just a lot more of a consistent finish. And again, right now it looks like it's in puberty with all the acne medicine on it. But when this is done, it's just gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. What do you guys think? I love this color. The, the green with the gal. Well, you guys were talking crap about it at first, and that always happens. And then once we see it, we're like, oh, this is good. So bigger than 8 by 6 building on site would be better. Love the coops. So bigger than 8 by 6 I, I'm not sure what that meant. Sorry. You can see there's the opening for the A cuts. Here's the other thing, too. What's really nice is we frame out both sides. This is true. American Coop, Carolina. Not sure if it's true on the Cali. Um... There's already, if you ever want to add an A-cut, you just cut that out, buy another A-cut, throw it on. It's just that simple. You can do it on the Cali. I couldn't remember. We actually got a Cali coop. I'm not sure if you guys want to see that. I showed it off a couple of days ago. It's going to a Montessori school right here in Durham. That, too, is going to be a roll-off. And I haven't, you know, we don't sell nearly as many Calis as we do Americans. But, so I don't talk about them as much. They do serve a purpose. That mint green is fantastic. Yeah, I love it. 
Uh, I, I, I love greens. My favorite is that 70s avocado green. That's actually the color of my office. But the Galvalume just looks beautiful. Looks absolutely beautiful on that, on the green. I'm trying to get a better shot. Just found out, too, if there's anyone listening that's ordered Rope Wrap Roost Bars, you're on our waiting list. It sucks. They just got pushed back another month. We were supposed to have our rope by now. Still not in. We have so many back orders on Rope Wrap Roost Bars. Sorry, bigger than 8x6 would be difficult to do a roll-off, so buying a kit or having a... Oh, God, I wish these would stay up. Let's see. Sorry, bigger than 8x6 would be difficult to do a roll-off, so buying a kit or having you all build custom on site would be better. also love the color. Um, it, it all depends. Uh, it depends on where you're located. We have a shop here in North Carolina, a shop in New York, so they can be built either way. And we have... how? What's the furthest we have drove doing a roll-off? <laughs> down to the southern Georgia border. The, yeah. Yep. And Evan did a roll off. It was about 500 miles one way. That's not bad. Evan That's did a roll off going from New York to Alabama with that goose house. Yeah. Eh? That was yeah. ballsy. Yep. Uh, I mean, technically, if we can drive there already, we can do a roll off. I know it costs more because we go through a lot more fuel because you have a lot more drag. For the record, you got a lot more people stopping you, talking to you. For the record, uh, Evan had me come and strap that load for him. Show him how to strap that load. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's interesting. He changed the tires on the trailer after the load load. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So that's all there is to it. You just put the bead in there. Wipe, excuse me, wipe with your finger. A good 40-year silicone caulk. That was a good question. That is one thing that... We've never had a customer call up upset about the caulk. So I guess that's a good sign. I probably just jinxed myself. Yep, you did. <laughs> that's how it goes. <coughs> Love this green. So, and I told AV, I'm going to send a couple guys with you from this shop. Perfect. Yeah, you're welcome. You better make it efficient and quick. All right, let's go ahead and say hi real quick. Unless you guys have any other questions about the coop. We're gonna go say hi to everyone real quick. Show off a little bit behind the scenes if you have any questions. I wanna do a step-by-step -step video just on finishing because I think it gets confusing, but it, it's not really confusing. You just have to learn all the pros and cons. Oh, here's the Cali Coop. If you guys didn't see this the other day, this is the one going to the Montessori school. Just sitting over here in CNC world. Just like the American, just smaller. And the reason why we call it the California Coop is because in California, they don't have as much land, usually, especially Southern California. Can you also do caulking before the first coat of stain? Absolutely. Another good question. It's actually, I'm going to say that's probably recommended. Anytime you're trying to have something that's going to adhere on it, you don't want any barriers. Uh, when it comes to adhesives, well, adhes a caulk is a form of adhesive. There are times that people get themselves in trouble. Okay, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> you get your coop. Let's see, let's go talk, let's go look at this one. <coughs> so here's a coop, all right? Got the walls. This one's actually a pickup, but either way. And we have already glued all the end grain. And that isn't just to make the joint stronger, it's actually to prevent wicking or capillary action so that it seals that end grain. Very, very soon, hopefully, I was hoping next year, it still could happen. I want to make these even more affordable and be able to ship them out in a full-on kit where you're not getting the walls. You're going to actually screw the walls together yourself. But here's the thing. You're going to want to assemble your walls or anything you're going to glue, you're going to glue that or caulk, in this case, glue, before you do any painting. Because once you paint, that's going to stop the penetration of the glue to do its job. So if you're doing a full-on kit, you're going to want to assemble the walls, glue it, and then paint it. But in theory, once you get to this point that we sell the coops now, nothing has to be glued. No reason for it. But again, keep in mind, when you're gluing wood and making anything for exterior, it's not only to make the joint stronger, and this is already screwed, it's to seal that end grain. Hopefully that made sense. Show you the Cali real quick. 
We don't have the back cantilever doors. It didn't look right. We did on the very first prototype. But the inside's just the same. Pull on kit. Um, and there's a lot of people, I appreciate that. Yeah, we wanna sell the full on kit. Let the customer do most of the work. You're putting in your own sweat equity, you're gonna save a ton of money, not only in the actual coop, all right? And we've done all the hard parts. We've done all the cutting, the notching, the pre-drilling. You're gonna have all the hardware. You will need a screw gun, you may need a hammer, and you may need a staple gun and air compressor. That's something we're actually talking about right now where we have to cut all these furring strips that um, it's very time consuming. And then the hammer over 2000 nails versus for the same price, if not a little bit less, you can go buy a staple gun and an air compressor. And we sell the 304 stainless steel staples to put the screen on. You'll do a better job and quicker. Right, Emily? How's shipping going? Good. Good. I think these are the last, or these are the last set of roost bars to go out, rope wrap roost bars before we get more rope. Yep. Yep. Yes, yep, still out on the water. Another month out for the rope. That absolutely stinks, so that's shipping. So let's go. Oh, this is what we got left for hemp. That's it. And they're saying another eight to 12 weeks before we can get more hemp. You guys wanna say hi to Nan and Kristen, the new sales girl? Maybe you guys got questions. Maybe you're waiting on an order. She did just page asking for an update. I'm still trying to get coffee. Maybe I will. Here's my office if you guys want to see it. This is that green. It's talking about. Love that green. Got a new little panther chameleon. Love my reptiles. Pink Floyd fan. And the dead. And fish. Some more Pink Floyd. We're painting a new logo. I can't wait to do this. So we got a projector shining up the logo up there. So we're gonna have a girl come in, put that logo on. I cannot wait to get that done. Am I that bad? I've heard that many times. Oh, she's on the phone. <laughs> I probably don't. If anything, coffee might calm me down. Would we be able to paint it on site? Because we, we would use a commercial sprayer and we could paint it on site, but that would, again, that would be a little bit more of a cost or expense on the turnkey because now we'll have to assemble, paint, wait for it to dry, and then go back and hang the doors, put on all your hardware and attach your screen and roofing. And clean the sprayer. So as you guys can see, Nan's busy. I don't need any more coffee. I want some coffee. So the sales girl's missing. Where'd, where'd Miss Kristen go? She's out in the shop. Hmm. Yes, yeah, and Mike, he said he wants you out of his room. You're acting like a little sister. Because I am. All right, I just saw another question pop up. How do you keep the wood from warping and doors getting stuck after the build? How do you keep the wood from warping? <clears throat> it sucks. It sucks. Um, you know, to be honest with you, there's not a lot you can do to keep the wood from warping. When you are going to deal with warping, whether it's bow, crook, and twist. Okay, those are the three. Well, and you got cupping. But with dimensional lumber, cupping's not such a big deal. Unless you're going the wider the board, you're going to have cupping. And there are ways to deal with that. Oh, God, that, that would be fun to show you guys how to take cup out of a wide, solid piece of wood. I don't have an example here. But I can tell you, I would say the answer to that question is prevention. If you're going to go to the store and get lumber, get good quality lumber and know what you're looking for so that you can doesn't work all the time, but to kind of predict that it won't bow, cup, or crook. And the way to do that, I don't want to bore you guys, but I'm going to show you. Now, we, we buy lumber, as you can tell. You know, we buy in full bundles, all right? So 
and then you know it just comes in the truck full bundle so we don't have this luxury well we kind of do no that's that's a lie we do purposely know how to look at a board and say this will be a good door piece and yes aesthetics is important this is number two grade but consistency so take a look at this piece right here this is what you would call flat sawn and that's very almost even when you're looking at the board at the end like right here here's a good example see how the center the pith would have been right about there that's the center of the tree is off a little bit yeah you can see it this one's gonna crook it's not horrible but see how it goes like this i know it's gonna do that because the grain on this side of the board is gonna react different than the grain on this side versus right here. If you look at the end of the board, here's the pith that's almost centered to the face. This one should be equal on both sides. I hope that makes sense. So to answer your question, prevention. That is very, very true, especially when you're buying four by fours. And then the other thing is, or six by sixes or larger lumber. The other thing is, if you are making doors and you definitely don't want it to move because you don't have the ability to have wood work with each other to stabilize it, you want, in my opinion, and this is what furniture makers love, is what's called quarter sawn. Now, none of this lumber was sawn for quarter sawn, so if I have wood people watching, I, I get that. But if you're doing, um, do we have any door wood set up anywhere? Probably not. So like, here's another great example. We're gonna look at all these ends. And what you're looking for is if there were any boards where the grain, see this is all rift sawn to flat sawn. I'm trying to find, oh, right, well, God, that's not a good one. I don't know. If you can find wood that has grain almost 90 degrees to the face, it's going to be more stable. And that will have a lot less prevention of, uh, or you have more prevention of warping, I should say. The other thing, too, is I want you guys to notice, and this is a good thing. Um, look how fast the wood is growing. This dark ring and that dark ring, that dark ring, that's when it was winter growth. And then here's how fast it grew through the summer. And that is on purpose. We got to keep the lumber sustainable. It's got to keep up with demand. But every now and again, you get some wood. Look how slow that one grew. That would be a good door piece. That's gonna be nice, solid, and stable. So to answer that question, prevention. Other than that, I have heard people that do a lot of decks. I've never done this. The thing about pressure treated, this is what's gonna move on you a lot. You know, and let me look at the bow in that one. I've been told if you got this wood, and it bows on you and you can't work it out, you spray it back down and it should go back to straight. I'm not sure if any of you guys have ever done that. I never have, I've been told that does work. But if you got pressure treated and you're not, it's gonna be a little while before you're gonna use it and you wanna prevent that from warping, keep it strapped. You use your dunnage sticks, which are just sticks that go underneath and then just keep it wrapped so it stays straight and then use it as fast as possible. But pressure treat, I tell you, is a nightmare because of bowing and twist and crook. And crook, like look at this one. There's a definition of crook. <laughs> you can make a rocking chair out of that one. You know, there, that, that piece will never get used. And that sucks. You know, I have to pay for them. And we'll end up donating it, giving it away. And, uh, or if there's ever a time we need to cut smaller pieces or shorter pieces, we can. What gauge is the metal roofing that you install on your coops? Hold on, I hear, no, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I, I hear noises. Here, we'll get a kick out of this. Not sure what Eric's doing. I heard the forklift over here and I had no idea why the forklift. Oh, so check this out, this will be fun. Here's one way we move coops and we do it all by ourselves. That's gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up and I'll let you do your thing. So this is Eric, everyone. I'm not sure how much screen time he's gotten. He just turned 20. There is hope for the future. There are kids, children from the younger generation that still wanna work, that still wanna learn. I am happy to report. Eric is one of them. 
but he's learning mental management. Do you like mental management? <laughs> oh, he makes me laugh. Okay, so look at that. So easy, we move a lot of our coops this way. So these are just what we call cannon dollies. And they're just dollies we make here in the shop. Nothing to it, it's just a cradle. And then you find your pivot point. Oh, 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 here we go. Look at that, just that easy. Who's responding on behalf of Carolina Coops? Let me know who that is. Because they say we are so lucky to have Eric. That is true. We are so lucky to have everyone. But Eric was a surprise. Wait, where are you going with this? Why can't we go outside? Because this has got to get delivered soon. I'm fine with it. I just want it out of the way. Let's get it outside. Going over there isn't as entertaining. Let's see if you can do it. It's going to roll down the hill. Do you want to hold the camera on? And it's Ingrid. Oh, it's Ingrid. Of course it is Ingrid. Ingrid, everyone. Hi, Ingrid. All right, keep your fingers out of there. I'm going to help Eric. And if a question pops up, let me know. I mean, you got this, Eric? Yeah, I can see it. That's why I opened the door. But he's got to go downhill. Oh, oh, you mean all the way up? Oh, yeah. I want it out. Let's get out, out, out the door. Sesame Street? Now you remember that one? In, in, in. No? Anyone? Remember that one? That was old school. You ever watch Sesame Street, Eric? Probably. I bet you Ernie was your favorite, huh? I, I think so. Yeah. Either that or Oscar the Grouch. Do you guys remember the one where he was in the pyramid? Um, I I wouldn't be surprised about Oscar because here, let, let me uh. Here. You got that okay, baby? Mm-hmm. You want to spin it around to have the heavy end? Well, oh, uh, actually, no, we can just go back backwards. Well, which way's backwards to you? This way. Well, I mean, like like walking backwards. I'll anchor it. You hold it up. Okay. You doing all right? Oh, I open the door. You open the door. That's why we can't have nice things on here, Eric. So obviously, if it starts getting, I think you got this. So you got, you got shot, Jetta? Huh? Oh, you should get out there so you can see him coming down. Wait, Eric, wait. Yeah, wait, Eric. Get the shot. Do you feel safe? Do you feel faint? No. Well, where are we going? We're going out. Oh, we're not going out. We're, we're going out the door. I want it out of here. All right, let's just set it down right there for right now. Well, now, now, now it's kind of more in my way because I was going to come get lumber. Oh. <laughs> of course you were. Moving the Cali. What we should do is put it on the trailer and get it ready to go. Uh, hey, A.B. I'm glad you're here. Here we go. Let's just get it right out the door. Let's get it right out of the way. You and Eric, you guys can grab that out that way somewhere. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are going to use the utility. Aluminum. Uh, we were going to use the aluminum. We were thinking about using the utility. That's sweet. What do you think, Jada? Yeah, let me see the shot. I'm focusing. You're focusing? You got it? Are you doing a good job? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, it's a pretty good... Okay. You know this one's going to a Montessori school? I should donate it for your tuition or something. Uh, here, I'll take it back. I'm getting bored. Thank you. Good job, Jetta, everyone. Aren't you supposed to be in school right now? Oh. So that's how we move the Cali. Or any of these coops. So it's just that simple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get you guys out. Sean's retiring. Sean can technically just stay here then. He doesn't need to go. All right. So that was moving the Cali Coop. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Where's Kristen? Where's our sales girl? Surprise that. <laughs> yeah, we got to get to Ingrid's house. Show off her coop and her netting and put on her roof. Ingrid, I know you don't believe me and you didn't see it. We've had your roof upgrade for what, three years? 
It's right there, still sitting there. <laughs> yeah, in the way. In the way. So it's under the table now. Oh, I see, so you're putting the screen up there. Okay, so she went to a, that's interesting. I had no idea. Hopefully it's to, uh, so we can start offering health insurance. All right, I'm gonna get going. I hope you guys are having fun. Hope you enjoyed the little show. If you have any more questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Is it driving you nuts that it's your brother's birthday today? No. Should we go see if mommy's off the phone? You bought the Seinfeld house specifically. Who doesn't love Seinfeld? Specifically. Was that wrong? I gotta plead ignorance on this one. Specifically for me and my get a build, he's not letting me help. <laughs> he's not letting me. Oh, uh, our kid's great. This. Oh, we're talking about netting? Who was is there a question about netting? I've done a lot of netting. Um, alright, so let's see if Nan is off. Also, I'm not going to Great Wolf Lodge. What do you mean you're not going to Great Wolf Lodge? I'm not going. Why? Gus. You can be without your dog for two days. He's live. We should do it. We're going to do a video. Are you still on the phone? No, I'm done. All hey. right. Um, what do you got? Bells on? That's really a thing? Go I, I'm here Snoopy. with bells on. <laughs> um, Kristen had to go to a uh, business meeting? Mm-hmm. For what? NC Works. Oh. Gotcha. Whatever. All right. Jetta's like me. She gets separation anxiety when she is away from her dogs. No, we show them the cup. What are we talking about? Show them the cup. You guys want to see a really cool cup? Here. You want to show off your cup? And you're going to read it to us? What's it say? Because when we went to the reptile convention mm -hmm. last weekend, mm -hmm. Jetta got a new snake. Mm-hmm. She's super pretty. Her mm -hmm. name is Sophie. Mm -hmm. Matt got a super cute chameleon. His name is Levi. I got a cup. And there was a silky there. I may look calm, but in my head, I've pecked you three times. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I forgot what that said. We should we should get those and sell the merch. All right. Well, I'm done. I'm gonna go out there. Make sure everyone's working. Does this work or personal? This We've is been live for 43 minutes. Well, people have had some questions about finishing and Ingrid's in there helping oh my say things. Ingrid's going to be back Wednesday. So we're going to get Yay! In yeah, Ingrid's going to be here two days. For 12 our, people our left foot alive. meetings. Foot meetings. Do we have any ERP specialists out there? 14 people left alive. Yeah, I know. Well, because I said I was about to say goodbye. Mm -hmm. And then people are like, okay, peace out, Matt. I got to go back to work. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody so else here has to go back to work also. Um. I don't know. Someone's asking about the bird netting. And Inger says you have anxiety, or she has anxiety just like you. So we got to do a video on the netting. All right, I think that's it. Matt used to be a bug guy. And a bird guy. And a bird guy. He used right. to have five birds or five animals. Oh, what gauge is the metal roofing? I totally got squirreled. Jizz, are you still there? What gauge is the metal roofing that you install in your coops? Uh, most metal roofing is 29 gauge. It is residential grade roofing, as they call it. It is hot rolled to prevent micro fractures and it comes in galvalum or painted. The painted copper comes in 26 gauge only. And we have installed a lot of 26 gauge. It's just a lot heavier. You wouldn't think three more gauges makes a big difference, but it does. Just as a and the, the recycle what? The painted copper does not patina. It looks shiny new. That's why I forever. emphasize painted copper. Well, some people don't understand, so they think it's still going to patina. It's just painted on. Uh, you know what we were also going to do? So we do need to get our coop set up here so I can go explain that, yes, water will go through your water bar without the pump on. <laughs> Gravity is an amazing thing, but I, I guess. Everybody has it. Yeah. Well, I think anyways. Gravity? Gravity. Here they do. Mm, here they do. Hmm. Okay. All right, I'm going to go. I'll see you guys later. 
<laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Don't I'm here, forget. I'm here with bells on, yep. waiting for all the calls. Don't forget uh, this Friday, video chicken. Not sure what the topic is. I think we got a guest. Ingrid, are you still there? We got a guest this weekend. A guest speaker. We have a guest on the show this weekend. Or this Friday. Another chicken. Oh, they can probably hear my music through the... I'm sure everyone loves your music. All a little right. morning metal on a Monday. <sighs> Things you listen to. Well... All right, we're going to show Jenna real quick that one of the Carolina Coop's pets. Jenna's first you. snake. She's got a lot of my reptile love. What kind of snake is she? Corn snake. Corn snake. And she's beautiful. She's a, what was she? A silver queen. Silver queen. Sun kissed. Someone yeah. says metal all the time. I never know when Nan's going to listen to. It's, it's so crazy. I'm very unpredictable. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about it, especially at your age. Hmm. Okay. Way too what much. What does that mean? Way, way too much silence on that one. For a Shoshuki Bond coop, would you want to burn the wood before or after assembly? We need to talk about that. I want to do, do the Shoshuki Bond. So, hmm. I would say after assembly. Don't melt plastic stuffs. Hmm. Huh? Well, no, when, if, if we were to do a custom chicken coop, can I show off? Can I show the design real quick? Is that wrong? Wait, what? I mean, I know Mike's seen it. The, the, Ooh. the tea house. I, people haven't seen, I keep talking about this tea house that's coming up that we oh, hopefully will finish no, soon. No, I wouldn't do that. Oh, the, th the coop Spoiler. is. Spoiler. This is the most Spoiler. amazing. That's like giving people the, uh, the last scene of the movie. I, I love the, oh, that's true. I love the brag about how good Evan is at designing. You he talk is. about a grand slam. The, yeah, so, show, 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 shogi ban. Am I saying it right? I don't know. I mean, you're Jap, oh, no, you're Chinese. Is it, it's Jap, show, so, sh shogi ban. Ingrid can correct me. Anyways, so, it's a treatment that you do to the wood to actually preserve it. And also, what I've learned, that this became very popular when you lived in an area that you have a lot of wildfires. So, when you burn this wood... Think about that. It just doesn't make sense, right? You're going to burn the wood to preserve it. So you're not only going to preserve it from your normal wood rot, you're going to preserve it from prevention of a fire. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't that fascinating? And how it does it is when you burn it under control, think about when you have a campfire and it kind of gets real bright at first and then it'll go down to like a dull roar. I would like a campfire. Yeah, and it, it's not as flamey does that make sense but it's still hot that's because like when you simmering when you when you do when you set a piece of wood on fire you're actually feeding the fire basically the sugars of the wood that's very flammable and if you do it under control you eliminate those sugars and then when you put it out if you try to start that wood on fire again it's gonna have a much harder time catching on fire and that's how you prevent it from burning also you you are burning off what feeds the wood destroying organi organisms. Uh, Carolina Coops, message retracted. Ooh, what, she, what did Ingrid say? Ooh, Ooh Ingrid. Uh, oh, she's retracting another message. Oh my God. Oh, Ingrid, what, what did I miss? Um, did we say something bad? No, no. We're, well, we're just, you need to scrape the wood with a wire brush. Oh. You don't have to. You don't have to, but it looks good. Oh, I misspelled something. Oh, okay. So, so it's absolutely gorgeous. And so the question is, if we build this coop, and this would obviously house? yes, before the screen is on, before the hinges are on, you go around with a torch and control it. And your level of burning is very important. It's a lot like staining. You got to be nice and consistent, but you're eliminating those things that the wood destroying organisms are going to so feed on, or the fire would feed on. Dude, that's pretty scary. We're going to be down in Florida. So I don't know scary. if there's a fire ban. I love fire. Well, it, it, you can scrape. You don't have to scrape it, but for the look, um, that's what you do is you go around with a wire brush, and it does get a nice, finished, smooth look. It looks amazing when it's scraped. Yeah, it, like I just said, yeah, it does. It makes it look better. You don't have to, but it's recommended for look. Absolutely. Um, was there anything else with the show? Am I saying it right? Show Shuggy Bond? So Shuggy Bond. Ask Siri. How do you hey, say Siri. 
Hey Siri. How do you say so sugi ban? Okay, I found this on the web for how do you say Sophie Bon. Check it out. So Sophie Bon. I'm saying it correctly. So sugi ban. Show sugi ban. Ew. What? That's just fun. <laughs> Gus has got a lot on his mind. Paintbrushes? AV wants paintbrushes. What do you need paintbrushes for? To get in the crowd. Oh my God, Gus, that stinks. Oh, I'm so glad I'm way out here. Uh, the by the mop sink. sink. Uh, slop sink. sink. Okay. But I'm saying two of them. So Shuggy Bond, show Shuggy Bond. I don't know. I can't wait to do it. But I know, I think it was said that you wanted to do it, which obviously it's your coop. You're, I mean, do whatever Sue you want. Sue Shuggy Bond. Sue Shuggy Bond? Mm. Sue Shuggy Bond. I don't know. I've never done it. I've seen it. I've studied it. I am fascinated with it as a woodworker. I'm very nervous about doing it, which makes me that much more excited. And I'm not sure if that's normal or not. And I just hope there's not a burn ban in Florida if we get to that opportunity. Oh, wait. That's the finish that he wants? Yes. Oh. Yeah, the entire tea house. Yeah. Uh, we can take turns with the torch. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm in. It, it's going to be very time consuming anyways. Super but satisfying. that might change everyone's level of so shuggy bonding. It could be different. You might see it. Hmm. hmm. And I wonder how long that's going to take and how much fuel that's going to take. I'm still staying. That's going to be a lot of propane. Yeah. So, but I can't show his coop real quick. I wouldn't. Oh my God. That smells so bad. Get a French master if they said it. it'll be great. What are you feeding this dog? Is he okay? I don't know. He doesn't feel good. Oh gosh, we don't feel good. Yeah, get a French mastiff. That's our that's our security. Um, you know how much wire brushing that's gonna be? And are we doing the entire structure, roof, everything, inside, outside? I don't know. Well, it has to match. Dude, you know, that's gonna be insane. Don't match. That's gonna be a. It's a lot of propane. I mean, it'll look amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. That's going to be the whole thing, he says. The whole thing. God, I wish, I wish, um, I need to put straw bales in or around my coop. Sadly, tonight we are going down to nine degrees. Ew. We got to get these chats. Ingrid, can you that? figure out how to keep these chats up? Um, I was wondering, do the chickens peck a lot? I have the harder foam and slate I was hoping you could use. <laughs> foam? Does that bring back memories? I wouldn't. <laughs> Chickens, sorry about the shaking. Chickens love foam. Chickens are obsessed with packing foam. Yep. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, so nine degrees, that's okay. Keep them out of the wind chill and you'll be good. You'll be good. Give them something, what is it, corn? Give them something that helps your body digest food at night mm -hmm. that helps keep them warm. Nine degrees, where's it? Where are you located? Nine degrees. Where's it going to be nine degrees tonight? That's somewhere real close or in downtown of hell. <laughs> That's got to be upstate. That's got to be northeast. <clears throat> yeah, I'd love to know where that is. Nine degrees. No, thank you. That's where it is. Don't forget about your water. Mm. What would you need straw bales for? To put around the bottom. People think that that... Oh, you need the storm cool. shields. Storm shields. Storm shields. People love those storm shields. Mm -hmm. That solves everything. I actually had a customer call about um, the roll-up ones again. Solar shields. Solar screens. Mm, um, I don't think I've ever been in nine degrees. You're lucky. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's awful. It's the wind chill that's awful. It can be nine degrees, and if the sun is out You're right. and the wind's not blowing, it's beautiful. Mm, nine degrees beautiful. and wind chill? And, Awful. And snow. And snow. Yeah, I got to love being down south. That's for sure. Um, hmm. Where would the it clear, be? The clearer. Um, oh, yeah, so it's up north. It's going to be 13 degrees in Michigan. God, it's so, I feel, I do feel guilty. It's so warm here in the Carolinas. I don't. I mean, we we have done our time in, yeah. um, in the north. We've done a lot of time. Mm -hmm. 42 years to be precise. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Um, let's see the coop you're building out back. Anything under four degrees for me is sadly Mother Nature's disagrees. 
on the coop out back. Yeah, we can go back out. Are you talking about the one we're assembling? Well, yeah, let's go check on them anyways. All right, Nan, anything are they, else? Are they ready to go yet? And I'm going to send uh, Eric and Matt and Dante. Oh, no, they don't need all five. I was... If Sean isn't able to help with the roll-off, why would we send him? AV can drive and then send all the abled bodies, right? Is that is that a mean thing to do? Um, no, because then Sean can prepare for the departure to go back to New York. Mm. I'm in the Pacific Northwest, and our average through winter is about 40 degrees. I'll never forget when we did a coop. Yes, the one you're putting together. Right, we'll head out there. If you guys have any questions, let me know. So, um... I'll never forget in, uh, when we did our first coop in the Pacific Northwest, we were on Vaishan Island, and as we were traveling through there, there were palm trees up there. I couldn't believe it. Way too quiet. What time is it? Way too quiet right now. It's not break time. Emily thought she was going to listen to country music this morning. Love Vaishan Island. I tell you. We, um, it is so much fun going on a ferry with uh, a chicken coop. You unplug, well, what'd you unplug it for? How's it going? Is it working? Uh, this one, there's no way one person can work on one end and on the other because you can't. Yeah, that's how we learn. That difficult. You guys want to see the coolest stop block? Other than a tiger stop, but it's from the tiger stop family. So there's the coop we're working on. We're going to go out there and ask them if Sean should go. Well, actually, let's just do that now. Sean, do you prefer to not have to go on the roll? Oh, and give me a thumbs up if I'm back. Look how much better. Wow. So I was going to send 80. So there you go. That is good. It's all caulked up, freshly stained. They're a spot now for the dowels. I know, I'm gonna get Wi-Fi extenders. That drives me nuts. She just spent eight weeks out in New Mexico Wi-Fi. The IT guy is coming tomorrow. I'll have to let him know. Wi-Fi extender, you got a recommendation? Bad signal, you might wanna need some Wi-Fi extenders. All right, all right. Um, I'll head back in here. Question, if I had you build one for me, how do I load it up and take off the flatbed? What's the process of moving it? So you have many different options. You can come pick one up that's fully assembled. We load it up and then when you get to your house and unload it, quite honestly, get a couple cases of beer and bribe your friends to come over and help you and just pick it up. And you can use straps. If you guys ever seen that infomercial where you put straps underneath and you pick up? That does work. We have moved some really big... I'm muted? Let me know if you guys can hear me again. Um, stupid Wi-Fi. So if you're going to move it, have people... If you come pick it up fully assembled, then you can have people pick it up and roll it off there. I've got sound. All right, good. Um, the other option, like this one here... This one's a pickup, and this is the best way of doing it, unless you didn't wait up with the pickup truck. And we're just going to take the forklift or the skid steer, one of the two, and we can just fork it right from the end, right on the back of the truck. And then when you get home, assuming not everyone I know has a forklift or whatever, you just start breaking your pallet down off the back of the truck. And we've done that many times. That works. And the nice part is, check out what we do here. You cut this strap, right? There's actually gonna be a couple more straps on here, but you, you, you cut all the straps. The whole thing's not gonna fall over. We purposely screw everything together so you can work your way from the outside in, taking everything apart. Learn that the hard way. So those are two options. And of course, we've had many people just show up. Um, you don't have sound? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you guys can hear me, let me know. I don't wanna. Just kidding. Um, or we can just pull parts and load it on the back of a flatbed truck or a regular pickup truck laying it all flat without the pallet. So hopefully that answers your question.
and then moving it. Okay, so moving it, I mean, you can, obviously you can use a trailer or a truck and then moving it on your property. If you don't have specialized dollies or a group of friends, you know the easiest way to move it? I learned this from the Egyptians. And I don't have them here, they're up in New York. Uh, and I've done this in a pinch, four inch schedule 40 PVC and you cut them so it's as wide as the coop and you do like three or four, maybe five, and you roll the entire coop. You can do sheds, you won't believe how easy this is. You roll them on the PVC and then when it continues moving forward and rolls off of a PVC, you pull that one and bring it right out to the front. Um, all right, I think there's a couple other things I saw up here as I was walking out. Maybe not. We're headed out to the Pacific Northwest here in the next month. Love Vashon Island. It's one of my favorite coops. We will be in Europe. You're right, you gonna go to Eric? Are you gonna go to Europe? Are you Irish? No. So we are, it is my plan. Once this building's done and I get a haircut, we are gonna either set up a shop in Europe or Australia. Australia? So, okay, if we go to Europe, where in Europe, though? I've never been to Europe. I don't know anything about Europe other than they don't like Americans, just like the South don't like Northerners. Um, I don't know. Sweden? Or the Netherlands? I don't know, somewhere with castles. That'd be cool. Castles are cool. I, when I think of castles, I think of Ireland. Yeah, Scott. So we, got a, so we got a bunch of wood in from Europe that came in from France and Germany. So right away, I'm thinking, hmm. France or Germany? Who has the better beer? France or Germany? Right. Germany. Germany. Um, so Australia, we get a lot of calls from Australia. They can't even get, they call it timber, and we call it lumber. They can't even get any wood right now. So that's been fascinating. Why Australia? And where in Australia? Australia is huge. Um, I love the ocean and surfing. Anything beach related. We have that here. It's three hours away. What are you packing up here? What are you got going on? I'm making a new box for the um, unwrapped roost bars because that one's really big and there's only three in there since we took the other ones out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so stuff it in there. someone, can I share some of the screw ups Emily has done? And this was almost another one. It was not my fault this time, though. So somebody was about to ship out three 10-foot rope wrap roost bars, and they're only supposed to be regular roost bars, so she's making a smaller box. Someone out there, a customer of ours, we don't know who. Wow. Boy, did they get lucky. They got how many boxes? Three or four? Four. <laughs> Eric's going to make sure we get this story right. Someone overnighted four boxes of hemp to a customer in Florida. Yeah. But that won't happen again, will it? Unless they pay for it. I hope they love me now. They must have been like, oh my God, how did I get this so fast? Kids. That was an honest mistake. It so anyway. Won't, it won't happen again. Yeah, overnighted four bales. Uh, I'm, you know I'm never going to let that down either. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try to go out there one more time. And then... I love, yeah, I love it. So the way to make my dad happy is cooking food and get my mother's pie recipe town, which was pretty damn good. I'll, did they bring the mixer? Did they bring the mixer down from New York? I hope so. There's been a couple things that were supposed to come down and they were not. Screws being one of them. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm tired. My arms are tired. Maybe we'll go live later when we do the roll off. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that would be fun. I don't really want to go though. I got enough to do. How much longer do you guys think you're ready? Notice the anti, can you guys see the anti sag board always going from up and down to that bottom hinge? Important detail. Yes, it's, that's the way they wanted it hinged, it's not hinged on the middle wall. But YouTube notifications suck. Man, a lot of people get them right away and a lot of people don't. That is important to make sure you hit that bell for notifications so you guys know we're live. 
You never know when I'm going to go live. It's usually a mood thing. And hoping that we have good Wi-Fi. And that shop's somewhat clean. All right, don't forget this Friday, Video Chicken Live at noon Eastern. Please join us there. We got to get that audience built back up. It got cut in half, I think, because we've been gone for a while. Could I buy a coupe, have it painted, and can have it assembled? If anybody knows how to keep these chats up, let me know. Can I buy a coupe, have it painted, and can I assemble at home? I guess what I'm asking, can it come painted? <laughs> Truth be told, can it? Yes. We used to do that a lot. We used to ship out painted coupes all the time. We stopped. And I made it a policy in stone. It is Carolina Coupes law. We are never to ship. Launch! Um, <laughs> I love that bell. Um, no, we are never going to ship a painted coupe again. And one of the reasons why we end up switching to a solid acrylic stain is also to experiment shipping parts that were painted, which technically stained. Here's what happens. We go to ship these out, and these are all painted. It takes 30 days before that paint is properly cured, and even then, these parts can still get stuck to each other. Can you break them apart? Absolutely. Here's what happens. No matter what I would tell the customers, there will be touch-up. People's level of touch-up, how much touch-up there should be, varied greatly. And if anybody knows me, I do not like a disappointed customer. I've lost a lot of hours. There's a reason why I've aged as much as I have. Um, it upsets me, and I don't like people being upset, and I, we just can't figure out how to explain there's going to be touch-up. I hate not doing something. I hate that we said no more shipping out painted coupes. But right now, the, the official answer is no. We're not sending it out painted. We have done a lot so that it is easy for you to paint. If you do turnkey by us, it's extremely easy. You just have us do everything. I have been known to make exceptions. That's all I'm saying to answer that question. My job is to sell. Well, it's really to make the phones ring. It's Kristen's job and Nan's job to sell. And their job is you always, first thing you learn in sales, you nod your head yes. But I don't know. I have been known to make exceptions. So if you are thinking about buying a chicken coop and if it was the only way you're gonna buy a coop from us and you sign 10 pages of you're gonna have to do touch up paint in blood, then I probably would agree to it. I don't want you upset. Um, or if you're not in a hurry and we paint it, we let it sit for 30 days. And I'm telling you, we put paper in between it. We still do it from time to time. It doesn't work. The paper sticks. Now, if we were to stain it, you have a lot less parts sticking. But some people don't like stain. They want to see that paint. They want to see that sheen. All that good stuff. So I hope that answered that question. Seppi. And where are you located? And I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Okay. Now I'm going to officially try to get off. Unless there's any more questions. What are you building here, Eric? I can only fit one pallet of screen up there, so I'm making side arms for the pallet. And then we're going to reload the screen. Onto here and put it up there so it all fits. Because we don't want it on the ground, correct? Correct. When you put things on the ground, we don't clean that well. So that drives me nuts. The whole point of putting the screen up there is so that you don't have to touch it again. Now we're spending time building a pallet and we're gonna move it again. So what we talked about doing is if we're really gonna stack stuff up there, we would just get some higher uprights. Because what we're worried about is that breaking and rolling off and killing someone, right? That'd be bad. Well, yeah, that would suck. But these also, like, I can only fit one pallet up there sideways. Who said you're gonna go sideways? Well, because they hang off, like... Six just put long. it up there this way. Okay. Yeah, be done with it. Okay. How many two-by-sixes did we have to sacrifice for this? These are the, the, did... the shitty rejects. No. Um, crappy rejects, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I tell you, lumber has been, I mean, the two by sixes, the love-hate relationship, that is called Wayne, and 
way more weighing on some of these boards or should be. I can tell you too, if you guys are thinking about either purchasing a coot from us and or building your own, lumber's already going up and it's gonna go up, I think, way more than it did in the past. It was insane how expensive wood got. When wood costs more than metal, there's a serious problem there. Serious, serious problem. And of course, we love our Doug fur. But anyways, okay, I'm gonna go. Love you guys. Have a wonderful Monday. Don't forget this Friday at noon, Eastern Video Chicken. Join us there. Tell your friends. Later.